Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome into the Back to 12 podcast. I'm R.C. Maxfield alongside of number 19, and don't you forget it, Lyle Leong Jr. On today's podcast, well, Lyle, it's been a minute since you and I've talked, so we've got a Super Bowl to discuss, a Mm. Hall of Famer to discuss, a pro Mm. football Hall of Famer for Texas Tech. Um, And what is that laying in the weeds right there? Is that Texas Tech men's basketball trying to undertake us and come back to life? We've got that. Baseball starts tomorrow as well. And uh, a pretty cool uh, thing going on at the Genesis Invitational where Tiger Woods is hosting. We've got a Red Raider involved in that. But first and foremost, Lyle, how you doing, my guy? Oh, man, it's, it's been a it's been a great, uh, you know, last week or two. Uh, it's been great for the Red Raiders. A lot of stuff to talk about. And, you know, anytime I get to get on the podcast and, and you know, talk to you the future you know um it's a, it's a good thing so like I said you know anytime I have you for another podcast it's a good day so I know uh ESPN and Fox um Fox are coming at you tough so you know I just got to make sure I, I hold on to you and, and let them know it's it's a two for one deal man you know Tom didn't want to take the Tom didn't want to take it they can sign us up I, I'll step in for Tom and take that 375 I do there we go we'll, we'll even just take 375 thou yeah. we don't even need the milk Facts. Yes, we Th- sure that's will. the truth. Um, speaking of a lot of money, though, how about MVP Pat? Huh? Got to give a shout out to him at the very first of the show. Wins the regular season MVP, Super Bowl MVP, and the Super Bowl. Uh, believe he's only one of two players to ever do that. Kurt Warner's the other. Um, so pretty crazy stuff from Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he's he started. I mean, it's the best start to a career in NFL history. I, I don't I don't want to hear about this. Tom Brady's won three Super Bowls. How can it be the best? Tom Brady didn't go to five straight AFC championship games. He played in three Super Bowls. The only reason that maybe Patrick Mahomes didn't win a third one was because Lyle and I were playing left guard for the Chiefs That's that true. night. Um, yeah. They didn't pay us very well, but it's the mm. truth. And, and then, of course, we got to give a shout out to the Red Raiders. They are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Zach Thomas, it is about damn time you put this man in there. Um, a five-time All-Pro, just absolutely electric. So hats off to him. Um, it was a really cool moment. Lyle. I don't know if you've seen the video. Um, we posted a short on here on the channel about it where Jimmy Johnson was the one that uh, got him into the Hall of Fame, announced it at his house. It was, it was just one of those moments where it was like, finally. Like you could tell from both guys, like, even more so Jimmy Johnson, I think like it meant more to Jimmy at that point because he knew how much Zach wanted it. Um, It's honestly kind of a shame that it took this long, but the wait is over. Texas tech will be represented in the pro football hall of fame. And Lyle, it is a, it was a crazy week for Texas tech football as you got Pat winning the MVP super bowl MVP, the super bowl. And now you're in the pro football hall of fame with Zach Thomas. Man, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's one for the, uh, books, as they say, but, um, you know, and then top it off, Patty, you know, and definitely, uh, you know, I want to give credit to his team, but, you know, he played out there with one leg and um, still was able to fight through it. And and so I thought that was awesome. And then, you know, uh, with us getting in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I thought the coolest thing from my perspective is um, it's just to me, you know, Zach is someone I kind of you know, not I saw myself as being that same way. He's an undersized guy that Texas Tech took a chance on, that did a great job. And so I think that's an awesome representation of Texas Tech. Not to say we don't have the guys that are of of size or speed. We have those guys too. But Texas Tech has always taken a chance on guys like Wes Welker that, you know, may have been smaller, may have not been the fastest, may have been not this, that, and the other. Um, that turned out and they worked their butts off and uh, you know, had great careers. And and so I think that's so awesome to have that representation of, you know, Zach Thomas and 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 have him in the, the Hall of Fame for one, uh, for his hard work and everything he did. But for two, you know, for Raider Nation to say we have somebody in there and and then, like I said, to top it off, you know, you just feel like even as a, you know, as a fan when, you know, when Patty held, held the trophy up when Zach got yeah, in. Yeah, Texas Tech like won the Super Bowl. feel like you're a part of it. You feel like, yeah, you know, I know I didn't put in any work that any of those two <laughs> dudes did, but I felt like, you know, I kind of held my hand up too when he held up the trophy. My wife's like, what are you doing? I said, we won the MVP. She said, we, <laughs> yeah, we did. And so, uh, 
no, it's just it was really cool to see those guys succeed and and you know, and to top it off, they're both um, you know, I've had the pleasure to meet them both. They're they're both really good people. So um mm-hmm. anytime you meet somebody that makes you feel like you're the superstar and, and uh they're winning MVPs and getting in the Hall of Fame, uh speaks volumes on those two guys. So I mean, it's awesome, great representation of of, of Texas Tech and like I said, you know, I sometimes I wish I was a lot older so I could play with Zach, and sometimes I wish I was a lot younger so I could play with Pat. So, <laughs> I, uh, I think you're all right though. It's not like you played with Crabtree or anything like that. I know, right? I played like, with some, you know, during the best time of Texas Tech football ever or anything man. like that. Yeah, we've had some. I think had... you were just the right age, Lyle. I, I don't. I I think there's there's certain people in this football program's history that have the right to complain about when they played. I don't think you're one of them, my guy. I'll keep you <laughs> yeah. in check on that one. I'll keep you That's check true, on that one. I got I got to carry a lot of uh, good people's helmets and shoulder pads on that side. Hey, man. hey, that's more than a lot of people did. You were a part of it. There you go. Right. That's what I you saw. Like to I hear. saw the. Uh, it's, it's crazy too. The other day, uh, I, they had it on ESPN Classic. They had the Tech game, and I was like, first and foremost, when they're throwing it on Classic, it hurt my heart. Like, man, I'm a classic. Like, <laughs> that's old. that's when you know. That's you when know. you know. And I was Age has got up. time has gotten away from you. Yeah, it sucks. And then at the end of the <laughs> yeah. game, when Crab caught the ball, I was looking at the camera. I was like, I wasn't even in on that play. I'm on the pile, like. You would have thought that I caught the game winner. I saw the clip. I'm on somebody's shoulders like I caught the game winner. Boy, did <laughs> <laughs> I just had a side. I probably would have done the same thing. <laughs> I probably would have done the same thing. Oh, man. Crazy. You talk about um everything in terms of great times right now. It's a great time for us here at the podcast right now. Uh, the channel's going crazy right now. We are the fastest growing Texas Tech podcast, and we are officially the biggest one on YouTube right now. Uh, by the time you're hearing this, we're probably going to hit 3,000 subs, which is absolutely insane. Uh, appreciate all the old subscribers, the day ones. We really do appreciate y'all. Um, like the video if you've been a day one uh, subscriber. And to all the new subscribers, welcome. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just here to try and guide the ship. He's really the guy you want to listen to um, when it comes down to it. And if you haven't already and you're seeing this, Hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the fastest growing Texas Tech podcast community right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. But Lyle, um, we got to jump into this because there's a lot to discuss um, Mm -hmm. in Texas Tech athletics actually on campus, not the guys that are, you know, killing it outside in the professional ranks or anything like that. Texas Tech football, they extended damn near every coach um, Mm -hmm. that they had. Um, Ten staff members, eight Mm -hmm. coaches two predominant personnel staff members uh, with the strength team and then um, also in the athletic department associated with football. But the big names, and I I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago on the podcast that it was going to happen, just didn't know when. But Tim DeRuiter and Zach Kitley Mm -hmm. both get three-year extensions. Um, I think they were just – they knew the time frame. I just think they were kind of going through the, hey, what's that exact number we're going to get? And I think it really came down to uh, Texas Tech – in the bonus or the coach's pool of money that they were mm-hmm. going to have, um, which right now in McGuire's second year is set at 7.5 million and is the biggest Texas Tech has ever had. Um, but Kitley stays, DeRuder stays. DeRuder is getting a contract of three years at 3.15 million over the life of the contract. So one just over a million dollars a year, well deserved. Mm-hmm. And then Zach Kitley is at 2.55 million. Um I want to ask you, though, Lyle, you played, obviously, college football. You've coached at the college football level. How big of an impact is it for players and even coaches to a degree as well, having that continuity at your position group spot, but having that umbrella type guy, which what the coordinator is, um, how big is it to have those guys in place long term and know if you're a player like, hey, that guy's going to be here you know, unless, you know, Zach Kittley gets a power five job next year, right? Like what kind of impact does that have? And by the way, I mean, power at five job is in the head coaching position. Um, mm-hmm. So what kind of impact does that have from a player's perspective, but also a coaching perspective in terms of having a little bit of that security? I, I think on the coaching side, it's a, it's a, not as big um, as, as, as for the, the, you know, the student athletes, because as a coach, yeah, it's it's cool to to know that you're you're comfortable, but you're never really comfortable. So extension sure. doesn't mean that you get those opportunities. You know, if Texas Tech didn't win a game next year or the next year, the extension 
won't make it to the end of the sure. extension. So uh, I think from the coaching world for them, it's still they got to go. Um, you know, we we live in a world where it's what have you done lately. So um, they still know how important it is in time of the essence. Now, for those student athletes, I think the biggest thing for them now, now that's a plus. That's where you get guys because we talked about this in the in the pod um, earlier, like guys go to play for people. Uh, and, and like I said, it's very few people, kids that go play for schools. There's some that go. There's some that go to Texas. Um, and, I, and I'll say that people go to Texas because it's Texas. People go to Notre Dame because it's Notre Dame. Uh, but other than those type um, schools, OU, those big, big, you know, uh, historic schools, most of these guys are going for location or who to play for the identity of the offense. And so uh, or defense, you know, like if, if I'm a receiver, I don't want to go to Wisconsin. I didn't want to go back in the day because I used two receivers or Georgia Tech. I would never go to Georgia Tech because I used one receiver. And you don't want to block. Be... You don't want to block yeah. for 70 plays, Lyle? Come on now. And it happened to be a Hall of Famer that's six six. I would have never seen the field. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things that um, you go play for that type of offense. And, you know, nowadays with um, nowadays with the transfer portal and all that other stuff, it's important to know what they're going to do. Everybody knows what we're getting on offense and defense. Kids are going to gravitate to kick because they know we're throwing the ball um, and quarterbacks and things like that. And and the things that Texas Tech has done as far as 25K a year for those kids, you know, they're getting walk-ons that's really scholarship kids. So I think it's huge for those guys because depending on who you bring in and a big deal was Tuberville, you know, and I, I like Tuberville. I know everybody, one of my teammates is probably pissed right now talking trash about me. I still love y'all, but um, is a difference in when he came and then when he left. The the kids that some kids didn't want to come because he was there. Some kids came because he was there. So I think it's just super important as far as what they're doing, and especially with this transfer portal. Those guys coming back ensures some of those kids to stay because they like what's going on. You know, and once you get a new coach, it's like, ah, is he gonna throw the ball? Or are we gonna line up and do triple option? And so I think those are the things as a kid. Um, even those kids that commit and and the type of of deal it is now, man, it's just it's just so easy to leave and go somewhere else and and do that. So I think that that's awesome for those kids. It brings a comfort to those kids to know um, that they have a spot, you know. And for those who don't know, usually you sign a scholarship every year, so they don't have to renew your scholarship. And yep. so that's one of those things where I had guys when Tubbs came in, some of them guys didn't get renewed. And so you go from not having any bills to owing twenty five thousand dollars. So um, it's a lot on those student athletes too. So uh, you just got to remember that they go through a lot trying to perform and still being good enough, still being talked about us in the media and other people. So um, it's a lot for those kids, but that's something that I think that they find comfort in. I think Tech did a great job with keeping those guys for sure, and they turned down some jobs. I heard um, yep. some head jobs, both of them. So. Um, that speaks a lot on Coach McGuire and what he's got going on because um, he had some pretty good ones. I'm not going to well, say that's the that's the thing. Happened. You 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 hit the nail on the head with that last point. There is this is a testament to Joey McGuire. Mm -hmm. I think um, this man got his contract extension as he as he should have um, in a lot of ways, um, but he himself multiple times said it was a priority to get these guys extended to get them more money because they deserved it because texas tech needed them to stay here because you mentioned it other schools were going after them and rightfully so right like what tim deruder did last year was impressive he, it, he has a track record of everywhere he goes he produces an elite defensive end if you're a defensive end i'm trying exactly. to go play for tim deruder like exactly. i'm trying to do that like that's why I am so excited about a guy like Steve Linton from Syracuse, who maybe doesn't have the best, you know, stats on paper or whatnot, but now he gets to be coached by Tim DeRuiter. And Tim DeRuiter changes things. Like Isaiah Crawford coming in here, guys like that, Josiah Pierre, right? He's not your traditional D end. He's that outside linebacker, stand-up pass rusher. But you've got guys like that. And when you get those guys up front, it allows you to have that defensive coordinator stay there, and that allows the guys to stay there. That allows you to really transition and focus on guys in the secondary. It's a mm -hmm. domino effect, right? And so I think also you mentioned the transfer portal. That's another aspect that I think is huge in this because every team in the country wants to be old and stay old. 
What Texas Tech did this year, they kind of zigged a little bit. So they went the younger route. Why did they do that? Because they knew a lot of their guys were coming back that are starters. So now they have kind of a free red shirt year almost in a way for guys where they can be coached up, still get in some games and everything like that. Perfect example is the Jordan Sanfords of the world, the Brendan Jordans of the world, right? They're going to be on the two deep this year in the Texas Tech secondary, but they're not going to be asked to do as much right away, but they're still going to get coached up by guys that have been there, guys that have been there too, and being old. And I think that having a guy like Tim DeRuiter um, and his versatility in terms of what he's seen on the West Coast what he's done at Cal, what he's done at Oregon, um, what he's done at Texas A&M, what he's done at Fresno State, who he's coached at those respective spots, and now adding Tyree Wilson to the mix yeah. really changes the game in the portal um, for Texas Tech. And again, you, you're going to be able to get guys in Texas just because this is going to be one of the best recruiting um, you know, staffs in the country um, at recruiting the state of Texas just because all the ties they have. Um, but when it comes down to it, I think that that's what changes is the continuity aspect. Texas Tech has been lacking that at a high level. Um, and again, going back to the main overall point of this, kids do not commit to schools. They commit to people. Amen. And when you have those same people there, that is a good sign for not only the kids you have in place, but for the kids you want to bring in. Right. So when you look at that again, you're not going to like that statement. I understand it. But most of these kids are not committing to Texas Tech. They're committing to guys like Joey McGuire. They're committing to guys like Kitley. They're committing to guys like Coach Perry, right? Like they're committing to those guys because like it or not, the guys you – well, really the guy you spend the most time with is the strength and conditioning coach. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, – and Lyle knows that's the truth. Um, mm -hmm. But you don't really spend a lot of time with, you know – unless you're a quarterback, you don't spend a lot of time with Zach Kitley. You're spending way more time with your position coach than anybody else on that right. staff. So of course that's going to be who you commit to. Um, and I think it's a big deal to get all of those guys signed up for at least one or two more years, three years in the coordinator's case, because that shows kids on the recruiting trail and also in the portal, Hey, they've got some sustainability there. And if I'm committing to that one coach, which most of the time they are, sometimes they're committing to a program, like Lyle said, um, I know he's going to be there and mm -hmm. that's what they're signing up for. Uh, but let's transition into basketball. But before we do Lyle, um, I want people down in the comments to give us their one word to describe their excitement level for Texas tech football in 2023, because it is at an all time high. I am getting abused for my eight and four take Lyle, um, mm -hmm. on a daily basis. It seems like, which is fine. I think, I love the excitement. That's what fandom is about. So just let me know your one word to describe how excited you are about Texas Tech football down in the comments. But let's transition to basketball loud because, man, they shut me the hell up real fast, dude. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, they're heating up. They're heating up right now. They've won four of their last six, but the last two games, um, beating number 12 Kansas State, beating number six Texas at home, um, and a guy that I, I've got to give credit for because I was knocking him earlier. I was I was critical of him. Devion Harmon, if you listen to my Twitter spaces, um, I've given him his flowers after I was critical of him. But he's been absolutely phenomenal um, in his last five games, Lyle. Averaging damn near 18 points per game, four, re, uh, four assists, 19 assists to only seven turnovers, three rebounds, one steal, shooting 37.5% from three. Um, mm. And he has led the Red Raiders in four of the last five games in scoring. And truthfully, he is the reason, in my opinion, that Texas Tech has a chance to turn this season around. Um, they basically just said, all right, Devion, go. And I, I think that that is a season-changing type decision for Texas Tech. Was it too late? I don't know. Maybe. Um, but, Lyle, what are your overall thoughts from specifically these last two games? Because – I'll talk about it here in a second um, on my points, but I, I truly think that Texas Tech changed their whole philosophy in these past two games against Kansas State and Texas. Uh, I definitely, you know, think they made some changes, but uh, my opinion, like I said, it's just when it clicks, it clicks. Sometimes it, it takes a while. Sometimes it doesn't click. Uh, sometimes, you know, people come alive, and, and I think that's just the difference. People have showed up. People have played, I think, 
sure. uh, some equals have been egos have been put aside and they realize, you know, it's kind of one of those things as a player, you get down when you don't win, you hear this, that, and the other, you know, and, and I think they came together and it clicked and they realized, Hey, we do got a chance. We do have a, a, a you know, an opportunity to do, but I, like I said, I don't think we're the most talented team uh, in my opinion. I just don't think we're super, super talented. Um, we disagree but, on that part, but yeah, but, I, we've we've disagreed all season on that part. Right. To be fair, though, but I think you know, I think we're able to compete. I just think you know, um, it comes with like years as a player. Like from my freshman year, the game moved really fast when I got in the game. Senior year, um, you know, it was kind of moving in slow motion for me. So I think those guys too. We got a lot of young guys that have to you know, understand the game. It's a big difference from high school to college with the things that that's asked of them, the things that they're doing, uh, the workload, the school load. It's a lot that goes into that. So, um, like I said, I think the biggest thing for them is they're just kind of, they're clicking a little bit. People are are giving a little more uh, and, and people are kind of understanding the game. Each, each game as it goes, you get better and better. So, you know, I, I heard a dude on the space talking about, you know, it's too much when Harmon collapsed and fell out, but, um, for those of y'all that don't know, I, I I advise you, or I don't advise you, I wish you could spend one day in their shoes and see what they do. Um, so a typical day starts for them probably at five and they don't get home till midnight uh, with school and everything else that goes into it. So uh, anytime you think these athletes are going out there and trying not to win or trying not to, you know, go out there and be successful, you're crazy because I can guarantee you they shoot over thousands of shots every day. They lift weights every day. Them dudes work. So um, like I said, I think they just got to grow up a little bit. Um, and, you know, that's coming from a player sense from my sense. I had to grow up in what I thought I was from my freshman year to what I really was, my role, understanding roles. And I think um, that's kind of been the thing, too, is everybody's not excited with their role. And, you know, even at the high school level, I get parents that call, my, my son didn't play. Well, he's not that good, uh, you know. Your and that sucks. Just, yeah, it sucks. And so, you know, <laughs> that's a hard pill to swallow when you're shooting 3,000 shots the same. The only the reason I can say that, Lyle, the only reason I can say like that your son sucks line because I sucked. So <laughs> I, I, I know the feeling like my mom never questioned why I wasn't playing because she knew I sucked. So there's that. <laughs> Man, you know, and I just think I think that's the biggest thing I see in athletes, you know, like. Freshman year, I caught the same amount of balls Crab caught. I said, I did the same amount of weights he did, watched the same amount of film, but it didn't correlate. He was a little better. Uh, so I think that's just – I think those guys are just understanding their roles and, and kind of, you know, not trying to do too much, you know, especially O'Ben. I think he's done a good job of not forcing stuff. I kind of felt like through the season he felt like he had to be that guy um, and had to make everything happen. And it's it's tough when – you know, when you're trying to be that guy instead of letting the game flow to you and being the yep. guy that you naturally are, which, you know. It's okay to be a secondary point. piece. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. And it'll get, and Not it'll everybody's play. a star. Not everybody's right. a star. And I feel like basketball is the only sport where – uh, not the only sport, but I feel like basketball is really one of those sports that it'll come to you. You got to let it come to you. Um, and you can't go out there and try to take it versus football. You know, running back, you can make 10 people miss it, go score, and that's cool. In basketball, you've got to let it flow. You've got to run through the offense. You've got to do the defense, and you'll get your shots, and you'll get your opportunities and, and take advantage of it. So, like I said, I think guys are just doing are doing a better job of letting the game come to them. And like Harmon, I think, like mm -hmm. you said, he's had them great two games, but I think he's allowed it to him, and it's kind of like football and receiver play. Um you not you may get one ball, you may get ten balls, depending on what that that defense is giving you. And so I think he's just it's just been his time these last two games. They have allowed him to uh, kind of get those opportunities. And I think the biggest thing is like he's taking advantage of them. Yeah, no, I, I think I think Texas Tech has changed everything, and it may have been too late. Um, and in all honesty, if we're being real about it, it probably is too late um, for <laughs> them to really make noise. I mean, it's just let's just be true truthful about it like you know the math is it's difficult right now for them to make the tournament and get to where they want to go um unless they you know get to seven eight wins and you know it's gonna be tough just again math um but the thing that they've changed schematically has been very impressive and a lot of people have been asking for it and I just don't think they could have done it in hindsight now and to be honest I was one of the people that was critical about it at least trying it but you couldn't do it because you didn't have Fardos. And Fardos being back changes legitimately everything in this offense. And I'll tell you why. 
him at the top of the key legitimately opens up this entire Texas Tech offense to not be, and I, I this is going to sound super critical, just on the floor, not dog shit. Like, like, they're good now. Like, it's a good offense. And the reason being is because Devion can now come off a screen from a good screener. And again, Kevin O'Banner, good player, just not a good screener. He's just not. Um, yeah. Fardos, elite screener. He is a very good screener. But teams have to respect him at the top of the key. And you got a 6'11 guy with a high basketball IQ that understands the screen game, that understands passing lanes and has a good passing ability. And you have him navigating from a perspective of where he can see guys going baseline or he can use his pivot foot and see guys off ball screening at the top of the key or at the top of the arc and get it to them. Right. And the Texas game was a perfect example. I mean, he was flawless in that game. I, I really, truly think Fardos changes things specifically for Devion Harmon, where Devion Harmon goes from a really good guard that's probably, I don't know, like the 10th best guard in the Big 12 to where he's like a top five guy in the in the league now, like probably fifth. And the reason being is because of the screen game. Devion Harmon is really good at screens, really good at it. The problem is, is he needs to create separation off of those screens because he's 6'2", he's as quick as lightning, but the problem is, is sometimes he hesitates, right? Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't make that right decision, and he's made every right decision so far. He's And that's not to say he didn't have a good a basketball IQ. It's to say that he's inconsistent with it, and that's fine. You're a college player. That's probably going to happen a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But with Fardaz and the separation he creates, those indecisive plays are cut down to a minimum. And the reason being is because he gets space. And when Devion gets into space, he can beat you in a multitude of ways. He can beat you with a floater. He can beat you with a stop and pop jump shot at the elbow. He can do a hezzy dribble, get there with the left hand, or do a hezzy dribble, get there with the right hand. He can finish through contact. He's built like a Greek god, and he's fast, right? And now he's shooting at a higher level, too, because people have to respect him from deep. He's shooting damn near 38% from three. Is he a 38% three-point shooter? No, but he's probably shooting about 34.5% from deep. Early on in the year, he was shooting 25. It's just the law of averages. It was bound to happen, right? And now you got a guy in Fardaz that helps you in a multitude of ways in terms of on the offensive end. Obviously, his size is a big factor too, but having Fardaz impacts Devion, and it impacts Devion in a way where Kevin O'Banner, as you mentioned, doesn't have to be that guy. And it allows Kevin O'Banner to play off ball. Kevin O'Banner is much better off ball than people give him credit for because he can stand in that right corner and he is legitimately the greatest right corner three point shooter in NCAA history. Now you got a guy like in Demarion Williams who can run baseline, cut, run off ball screens, find some space, and just be ready for a catch and shoot opportunity. Then he got Jalen Tyson, who, as soon as he sees Devion go off space, he can make a beeline to the basket for a rebound opportunity. Same with Fardaz if he doesn't get the ball. It just creates so much more off ball movement and less of that three man weave crap that Texas Tech was running at the beginning of the year. And if you can have that on the offensive end, I think it actually helps you on the defensive end because it allows you to take more chances. And Texas Tech taking chances creates more turnovers. We've seen that the past two games, right? And that's where Texas Tech benefits is when they create turnovers and they create more opportunities offensively and uh, disallow teams on the defensive end that they're trying to guard where most of the time Texas Tech is in bad situations just because they're trying to run a no middle um, and they just don't have the personnel for it. But taking those chances and allowing yourself to do that increases the likelihood that they're not getting a shot. Now, they may get an easier shot just because you are taking that chance, but you also have a better chance at creating a turnover. And I think Fardaz and Devion and that senior leadership is really coming into play right now for Texas Tech, and they absolutely need it as they go into West Virginia on Saturday at 11 a.m. That's going to be tough. We've talked about time zones before and how those mess you up. Um mm. It is not easy to play at 11 a.m. in West Virginia. It's just not. Um, it's really not easy to play at 11 a.m. anywhere, let alone West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and then you play Oklahoma on Tuesday in Norman, right? I think if you split one of those two, th those two matchups, you beat TCU, and then you beat Oklahoma State. Just win the rest of your home games, right? And then you win one between West Virginia and Oklahoma. All right, now you're sitting at six wins. 
Maybe you win a couple in Kansas City. Now you're at seven or eight Big 12 wins over the whole scheme of things. Does that get you into the tournament? It's a big question. Um, you look back at it. I tweeted this yesterday, um, Lyle, where since 2014, here are the Big 12 teams with the fewest conference wins to make the NCAA tournament. 2014, Oklahoma State, eight. Texas and Oklahoma State, eight in 2015. Texas Tech with nine in 2016. Seven, Kansas State in 2017. Oklahoma with eight in 2018. Oklahoma with seven in 2019. 2021, nine, Oklahoma. Last year, o or Iowa State was seven. The league is so good, you can be under 500 by like four games and still make the NCAA tournament. Like, But you got to get to seven. I think seven is the bare minimum to have Texas Tech in the conversation. The real question is, do they get there? And that's where I'm going to ask you guys to let us know down in the comments. Will Texas Tech make the NCAA tournament if mm. they get seven wins? Mm. Why for yes or in for no? Mm. And that includes Kansas City. That includes Kansas City. So if you go into Kansas City with six and then you win one in Kansas City, maybe two in Kansas City, do you make the NCAA tournament? Let us know. Lyle, let's end the show with this real quick, mm. though. Um, as I went on a tangent there, I felt like I was talking for five hours. I apologize. It was a good tangent, though. That was great. Great uh, info. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. My fiance would say different. She'd probably tell me, shut the mm. hell up. Um, but it is what it is. I don't blame her. I talk way That's too much. Me. Um, Texas Tech baseball, they start their season against Gonzaga tomorrow. Number 24, Texas Tech baseball. Uh, the rotation will go as follows Friday. You got Kyle Robinson, the right hander, six, six sophomore mm. going on Friday night. Yeah, or Friday afternoon, excuse me. Then Saturday, you got Mason Molina, who had a really strong stretch to end the season last year for the Red Raiders. The lefty from California, the sophomore, will start on Saturday. And then the guy that I'm probably most interested to see from the pitching side of things will be fifth-year senior, second year at Texas Tech. It'll be Bo Blessy. He's the right-hander, 6'3", 200 pounds. The Nebraska transfer from Midland, um, Really interested to see him. He, uh, apparently, Lyle, I was here and he was hitting damn near triple digits uh, during the fall and spring before the mm. season started. He was sitting at like 98. I couldn't imagine what that looked like coming across the plate. I can. I can. And let me tell you, you you, you can't imagine it because, uh, well, you can only imagine it because it's the only thing you can do because you're not seeing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's that simple. Um, yeah. But it should be fun to watch. They're going to be a younger team. Some guys that I'm watching, Lyle, are kind of who takes over second base. And shortstop, it's the first time in seven years. Seven years, excuse me. There isn't a young brother on this team. So I Josh know. or Jace, and first time in seven They've years. Been doing work too. Yeah, I mean, you could argue that they're two of the top five greatest players in Tech history, um, mm -hmm. from the same family. I'm interested to see who starts at shortstop and second base. I think it's going to be probably a combination of freshmen, whether that's Will Burns, Austin Green. Um, probably Tracer Lopez is in there as well. Interested to see where they go. Maybe even uh, Zach Vul uh, Vuletic gets a little bit of run. Maybe he starts in the outfield. It'll be interesting. He's going to be the Swiss Army knife uh, utility guy for Texas Tech this year, moving all around the infield and the outfield as well. Um, but I'm super excited. Baseball's just around the corner, so that'll be fun. And then one more shout out, Lyle. We all like Tiger Woods. I'm watching yeah. golf. Are you going to watch that new golf documentary on Netflix, Full Swing? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I started it yesterday. How um, was it? it? Oh, fantastic. I'm going to okay. have to watch it like four times Yeah. Um, to get like every detail. But at chef's kiss of work. Um, yeah. By the way, have you, do you are you into racing as well, like Formula One or anything like that? I mean, I don't dislike it. Have you, you know, watched the Netflix series for that? No, but I'll be. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. It's it, it and I didn't even like racing before that. Um, but just the drama of the show, outstanding. But I would say I have been to uh, I forgot where where I where I went to, but I had a great time. My uh, I went when uh, back when I was playing, one of my old lineman buddies was like, Hey man, come on. I was like, Man, I've never been. Oh, did you go to Texas Motor Speedway? Uh, no, this was uh, this was out of it was out of state. I forgot where I okay. went. It might have been. Is there one in Alabama? Tell it, is it? I, I Talladega, I know that that's one. I, I, yeah. I, I yeah. oh, you're talking about NASCAR. This is Formula One. No, oh, yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying, I went to, I just yeah. went to a race and I didn't think, you know, same with like golf, my first ever golf. Like I had a great time at both of those events. Like I didn't know it was that fun. Yeah. It was like a party to get there. And then once you 100%. got there, the party continued. 
And I'm not going to lie, like, I didn't know who was in first place, but I did know I had a great time, and I just yelled for every car that came by. So I'm sure there's some pissed off people, but I enjoyed it. You know, I still don't know who yeah. won, but I freaking loved it. I, I highly recommend the F1 documentary then on YouTube. Okay. Or not on YouTube, on Netflix. Um, it's hey, really and he is good. not sponsored by this, but Netflix, no, if y'all no, would like no. to sponsor him, go ahead and sponsor us. That'd be you dope. Us on YouTube. Yeah, 3K. <laughs> talk that talk. By the way, <laughs> shout out to all the new subscribers and all the old ones. Seriously, the old subscribers, the OGs. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments how long you've been here. I want to know. Yeah. I want to know when you subscribed. Like, were you in the top 100? Are you in the top 500, top 1,000? Let us mm. know. And to all the new people, welcome. He's Lyle. I'm RC. We're here at least once a week talking everything Texas Tech Athletics and just giving you, well, depends how you view them. Good takes, bad takes. I don't really give a damn how you view me, um, to mm. be honest. I really don't care. I'm just going to tell you how I see it, like it or not. Um, and that's probably the best thing about us. Lyle and I don't agree on a lot of things, and I think that that's what makes this podcast um, super unique. Um, especially in the Texas tech space is uh, he thinks the basketball team isn't that talented. I think they're talented. They just, you know, sometimes talented teams don't win. It happens. Um, and trust me, we disagree on a lot more. You're going to have to check it out <laughs> though. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and be a part of the fastest growing Texas tech podcast community here on YouTube. But before we head out Lyle, where can the people follow you on Twitter, my guy? Hey, y'all can follow me at Coach L L E O N G, and you can follow my main man RC at RCMB three two three. I'm doing Texas Tech post game Twitter Spaces as well. Um, shout out to the Lyle. I saw how much I peaked at. It was three twenty one after yeah. that Texas game. That Over a dope. thousand people tuned in. Appreciate all y'all for that. Um, really fun space where we curse a lot more. I try and keep it at least PG thirteen on here. Over there depends on the night. Uh, to be honest, it might be rated G. It might be rated R. I don't know. Uh, but that's just who I am as a person, Lyle. Take it or leave it. You know what I mean? That's what makes it great. That's why ESPN is trying to steal you. Not have I hope, it. Hey, hey, I, I'm more than willing for them to steal me, but we're not going to stop doing this. I can tell yeah. you that much. Well, let them know. Put stop. it in the contract. I know how they try to do. They try to. Oh, uh, I know, and, too. Tell them we're not going to be uh, Skip and Shannon part two when they retire. That's not what this is. No. You know? No, I don't want to be Skip. I think that's a slap in the face to me and how great I am. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's Lyle. I'm RC. I'm going to shut up before uh, people think I have a really big ego. I promise you I don't. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech Athletics all year long right here on the fastest growing and most subscribed to Texas Tech podcast on YouTube. Of course, I'm talking the Back to 12 podcast channel.